Elon Musk's SpaceX has quickly become one of the leading companies in the space exploration field. Focusing on communications, transportation services, and aerospace equipment, the company has seen rapid growth in recent years. But they don't have it all their own way, and there are plenty of competitors waiting to take their spot. Today, we're discussing the top 10 SpaceX competitors and alternatives who all want a piece of the action. So stay with us. First up, we have Blue Origin. When Jeff Bezos isn't busy packing up, and sending you your latest Amazon purchase, he's hard at work running his other company, Blue Origin. The world's on-off richest man funded the company by selling around $1 billion worth of Amazon stock. But it isn't particularly profitable right now, bringing in a return of just $20 million. If Bezos gets his wish to commercialize spaceflight, however, that could easily change. And quickly, he was on board for the company's new Shepard maiden flight last year, which could see Blue Origin run regular space tour tourism flights, but it won't come cheap. At around $28 million per seat, the regular Joe probably won't see space in their lifetime. But these are very early days indeed. The milestone means Blue Origin is front and center when it comes to competing with SpaceX. We're talking Virgin Galactic next. Stay tuned. Another space exploration company is funded by one of the world's wealthiest men, British billionaire Richard Branson. Virgin Galactic is currently developing commercial and suborbital spacecraft. In terms of brand recognition, recognition and tech, they are pretty much on par with the other two. But Branson's company does run at a considerable loss. It must be nice to own a company and not worry about its profitability. Similar to Blue Origin, last year saw Branson himself enter space on board the Virgin Galactic rocket as part of its first fully crewed test flight. If he gets his way, the company will begin commercial operations in the very near future. Although you're going to need a few dollars if you want to be on board, as tickets are going for about $250,000. Pounds. He plans to eventually lower the price to about $40,000 per ticket. So compared to SpaceX, Virgin is probably the smarter choice for space tourism. Next up, we have United Launch Alliance. Moving away from tourism a little, ULA develops rockets and launch services and are much more profitable than the others, making around $2 billion in 2020 alone. Their close working relationship with Lockheed Martin and Boeing is one of their biggest advantages, and they have been known to regularly bag the most expensive military satellite launches, something which prompted Musk and SpaceX to sue the U.S. Air Force back in 2014. The case prompted the military to share out contracts more equally to both SpaceX and ULA, meaning the pair have an extremely heated rivalry. What did you guys make of SpaceX suing the Air Force? Pretty wild, right? Northrop Grumman is coming through next. These guys have almost 100,000 employees and are a huge player in the weapons and military tech space. Having acquired Orbital ATK back in 2018, they are now making waves in the space industry. Plus, their annual revenue seriously eclipses, pardon the pun, Virgin, Blue Origin, and SpaceX at about $30 billion per year. Mainly involved in government satellite launches, they were also behind a new sensor, which is able to detect missile launches for the U.S. Space Force. With the massive monetary advantage they have, the other players in this field better hope and pray they don't get into tourism or transportation. For now, it seems they are happy producing satellites for the Space Force. What do you guys make of weapons manufacturers entering the space industry? We have Rocket Lab next. Stick around. Rocket Lab's focus is mainly on the launch of small satellites in manufacturing. One of the smaller companies out there, they are growing slowly by bagging numerous small sat launch contracts. Their main advantage is that they seem to only focus on advanced satellite launches. However, disaster struck in 2021 as their Electron rocket failed to reach orbit. They have so far completed more than 20 mission flights. But one sticking point which might affect their competitive edge is that they can only provide smaller satellites no bigger than 440 pounds. They may expand in the future, but as of now, they are probably happy with being SpaceX's main rival when it comes to small sat launches. Arian Space is up next. Stay with us. The first company in the world to offer commercial launch services, these guys have been going for quite some time and actually launched their first commercial space flight in the 80s. Since then, their numbers have been pretty impressive, launching more than 850 satellites and generating more than $1 billion in 2020 alone. However, it is thought they are currently struggling to compete with the deep pockets of rivals, such as Bezos and Musk, and last year requested assistance from EU governments to help fend off the big boys. 
price. Despite their problems, they are still SpaceX's main competitor in the European market and managed one launch per month in 2021. Who would you guys choose to go to space with if you had the option? Next up, it's Space Adventures. This one just sounds fun, right? These guys organize space tours for the uber rich and have placed clients on Russian Soyuz missions to the ISS in the past. But you'll have to save up for a seat as they have been known to charge up to $100 million for the privilege. They also signed a deal with the Russians to send a couple of customers to the space station next year without even owning a rocket themselves. Similar to some of the smaller companies on today's list, Space Adventures have cornered a small part of the market and seem to be reaping the rewards. We're talking Astronus now, don't go anywhere. Astronus are a big name in the telecommunications space and offer lower cost satellites than their competitors, perfect in the current economy. Similar to what Musk is doing with Starlink, these guys provide cheap comm satellites with the ultimate goal of connecting remote points on Earth. They managed to bag serious investment last year to the tune of $350 million in total and are in a unique position when it comes to competing with SpaceX for a slice of the large communications satellite space. They're offering more targets targeted LEO constellations than their bigger rival. What do you make of what Astronus is currently doing? The Society of European Satellites is coming through next. SES focuses mainly on telecommunications and data connectivity and currently has more than 70 satellites in orbit. One of the smaller companies with just over 2,000 employees, they managed to generate a hugely impressive $1.6 billion in 2020. But this was actually down by more than $300 million. I mean, if you're posting those sorts of numbers with so few employees. Even if revenue has declined some, you're doing something right. The company has a ton of experience in the satellite space, having been around for more than 35 years, and they will be hoping they can carry on with their impressive run as they expect to realize their first $1 billion from C-band repurposing in the near future. And now it's relativity space. Another one of the smaller competitors to SpaceX, these guys manufacture equipment for commercial orbital launches and focus mainly on small launch vehicles. Their business revolves around components for launch vehicles. So like many others on today's list, they are currently focusing on one small part of the space industry, which is probably a good idea for a startup. They managed to bag more than $1 billion in funding last year alone, which is hugely significant for a company with just 400 employees. And they're growing. It is thought they are currently building a new research facility, which will be capable of facilitating more than 2,000 employees. If this isn't a statement of intent, then we don't know what is. They are also thought to be using some of the funding to increase production of their 3D printed Terran 1 rocket. It is assumed the Terran R will be one of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket's main competitors. And considering what they have managed in a relatively short space of time, Relativity Space is currently one of the more valuable space companies out there. What do you make of this? And finally, a bit of Elon news. Twitter shareholders have voted to approve a deal for the SpaceX chief to buy the social media platform for $44 billion. They will now try and force Musk into buying the company. But as the two sides are still embroiled in a legal case, there's no telling how long that might take, nor if they will even be successful at making him purchase the company. Of course, Musk is skeptical about just how many bots and fake accounts are on the platform. This prompted him to pull out of the deal back in May. We will have to wait and see how this goes when it finally comes to court. Do you guys think he should be forced to buy Twitter. As usual, thanks for dropping in on us today, and remember to tune in again next time when we will be discussing all sorts of other cool bits and pieces. And why not do us a solid by liking and sharing today's video, while also subscribing to our channel. Bye guys!